heart has longing Only you can fulfill All the places I'm searching Never complete me I can chase after money the fame in this world but my soul is at home in the place where you dwell better is one day better is one day better the calm in the chaos you're the peace in the storm in the mountains and valleys my eyes are on you Lord I know you are faithful come through when you say you are with me Lord I know it's true better is one day better is one day better day with you Jesus there's no way no way no way that I'd rather be Jesus there's no Good morning everyone and welcome to our humble live stream from our Stokes Valley House. My name is Julia Coleman, I'm one of the co-priests in charges at Mary Silverstream. James, the other co-priest in charge, is the one who makes all these things happen. 
This is our son Jacob, who's the worship leader, Hello. and our daughter-in-law is the camera operator. So as you can see, we're all hands on deck for this live stream. It is so great to be able to, te um, to connect with you through technology this morning. So a really warm welcome to you. Kids, if you're watching, hi. I hope you've got some instruments or something you can uh, use to, to sing along and to play along as we worship this morning. If you've joined for us for live streams before, it's a pretty similar format. We have songs of worship. Uh, James is bringing the sermon today. We have a time of communion, a kid slot. But all of it is for Jesus, who we love, we worship, we adore. And so, Lord, today I'm going to pray for the service. We're going to worship um, through song. But, Lord, I pray, come Holy Spirit. I pray that you connect us together regardless of where we are. I pray a blessing today on this live stream and on every other live stream or every other offering from a church this morning. Lord, we raise our voices in song with believers throughout the country and throughout the world to honour you, to praise you and to worship you. So let's worship you in song first this morning. Amen. I would say let's stand, but you don't have to do that. Let's just centre ourselves in Jesus this morning. Yes, Lord, it's all for you. Everything, every song, every breath, every action, all our lives for you, Jesus. We can't thank you enough. You're always present. Every high and low, Lord, you're so worthy. Turning 
stop working Even when I don't see it, you're working Even when I don't feel it, you're working You never stop, you never stop working You never stop, you never stop working Just who you are. I'll break the case. has spoken I am forgiven the King of Kings calls me his own beautiful Savior I'm yours forever Jesus Christ my This grip on me, you have broken every chain. There's 
salvation in your name, Jesus Christ, my living hope. Hallelujah. Praise the one who set me free. Hallelujah. Death has lost its grip on me. salvation in your name, Jesus Christ, my living hope. Then came the morning that sealed the promise, your very body A Hall of Fame is a place that honors people that are exceptional at what they do. It exists to remind future generations of the greatness of these people from the past. Did you know that God has a Hall of Fame to remember the extraordinary people of faith who were written about in the Old Testament? And we can find that Hall of Fame in the New Testament of the Bible. Hebrews 11 tells us that faith is the confidence that what we hope for will actually happen. It gives us assurance about things we cannot see. This faith is what gave people in the old days great fame. This faith is what puts them in God's Hall of Fame. By faith, Abel gave his best to God. By faith, Enoch walked with God and was a friend of God. By faith, Noah listened to God, obeyed God, trusted God, and did what's right. It was by faith that Abraham followed God and that even Sarah, Abraham's wife, believed that God would keep his promise. 
It was by faith that Isaac promised blessings for the future to his sons, Jacob and Esau. And by faith, Jacob blessed his sons and worshiped God. By faith, Joseph believed that God would guide him and see him through every troubled time. By faith, Moses looked forward to the great reward that God had in store for him and led the people of Israel out of captivity. It was by faith that Rahab was not destroyed with the people in her city who refused to obey God. And it was by faith that Joshua led the people of Israel. All of these people became famous for their faith, yet none of them received all that God had promised. For God has planned something better for us so that only together with us would they be made perfect. So since God has given us his hall of fame of people who have gone before us and had great faith despite hard times, let us run with endurance the race God has set before us. We do this by keeping our eyes on Jesus, the champion who makes our faith perfect, so that one day God may say, well done, good and faithful servant, and we may be initiated into his great hall of fame. Hi, everyone. Our second reading today comes from Mark chapter 7, verses 1 to 8, then 14 to 15, then 21 to 23. The Pharisees and some of the teachers of the law who had come from Jerusalem gathered around Jesus and saw some of his disciples eating food with hands that were defiled, that is, unwashed. The Pharisees and all the Jews do not eat unless they give their hands a ceremonial washing, holding to the traditions of the elders. When they come from the marketplace, they do not eat unless they wash, and they observe many other traditions, such as washing of cups and pitchers and kettles. So the Pharisees and the teachers of the law asked Jesus, "Why do your disciples live according to the tradition? Why don't your disciples live according to the traditions of the elders, instead of eating their food with defiled hands?" He replied, "Isaiah was right when he prophesied about you hypocrites, as it is written, these people honor me with their lips." but their hearts are far from me. They worship me in vain. Their teachings are merely human rules. You have let go of the commands of God and are holding on to human traditions. Again, Jesus called the crowd to him and said, Listen to me, everyone, and understand this. Nothing outside a person can defile them by going into them. Rather, it is what comes out of a person that defiles them. For it is from within, out of a person's heart, that evil thoughts come sexual immorality, theft, murder, adultery, greed, malice, deceit, lewdness, envy, slander, arrogance and folly. All these evils come from inside and defile a person. There we go. James Coleman. Oh, good morning. Today I want to talk about the importance of recognising Jesus as God and the importance of faith in him and to do that I really want to look at the reading Gabby just read out but also the bit that follows immediately after that so you can see the contrast between the two so I'll just read out the bit that goes after that it's about the Syrophoenician woman and from there he rose and went away to the region of Tyre and Sidon and he entered a house and he did not want anybody to know yet he could not be hidden but immediately a woman whose little daughter had an unclean spirit heard of him and came and fell down at his feet. Now the woman was a Gentile, a Syrophoenician by birth, and she begged him to cast the demon out of her daughter. And he said to her, Let the children be fed first, for it is not right to take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs. But she answered him, Yes, Lord. But even the dogs under the table eat the children's breadcrumbs. And he said to her, For this statement you may go on your way. The demon has left your daughter. And she went home and found the child lying in bed with the demon gone. So as I mentioned, I want to talk about how important it is to recognise Jesus as God and to have faith in him. And you can see that importance if you contrast the two groups of people, the Pharisees and the teachers of the religious law on the one hand and the Syrophoenician woman on the other. The thing about the Pharisees is that they were, they were Jews and culturally they recognised that there was a God. But what they'd done is they'd made up all these man-made rules, a lot of them, but not exclusively, were focused around eating and stuff like that. 
and their thought process was that because they kept these rules, they would be right with God. And before you roll your eyes too much at that thought process, it's what every culture does, whether it recognises God or not. So, for example, in our culture, we do exactly the same thing. We've got a set of ways of thinking that we think make us virtuous. And if we had a, a culture that recognised God, the logic would be, well, because we are virtuous, because we do these things, we would be right with God. And it's exactly the same logic that the Pharisees had. But Jesus said to the Pharisees, you guys are hypocrites. You honour me with your lips, because they were acknowledging that was a God. there was a God. But he said, your hearts are far from me. And they were far from him because rule keeping doesn't make you right with God. He pointed out that evil comes from within us, from our hearts. And when the Bible talks about our hearts, what it's meaning is that it's the inner thought world that we possess. Our thoughts, our reflections, our wills. That is the source of evil. And the solution to rooting out that evil is recognising Jesus and having faith in him. Now the thing about the Gospels are that they are confronting, and they are confronting because they cut straight to the truth. As Julia said, the truth will set you free, but it will make you angry first. Or as a Catholic writer said, Flannery O'Connor, the truth doesn't stop being the truth just because of your emotional capacity to cope with it. So you see them on the one hand thinking that it's all about rule keeping and then on the other hand you see the Syrophoenician woman and the cultural thing to understand is that she wasn't a Jew, so she wasn't keeping any rules at all. She was a Gentile and from a Jewish perspective the word Gentile and the word sinner are synonymous, so much so that there was a nickname for Gentiles which was dogs. That's the cultural difference between the two. So Jesus is now in a Gentile area and this woman comes up to him who knows she's got a spiritual problem and that there is evil in her daughter and she wants Jesus to get that evil out and Jesus says to her well look I've come firstly for the children of Israel for the Jews and she responds with incredible humility she says yes but even when a family is eating its meals there is crumbs left over for the dogs under the table. She's identifying herself with being a Gentile. She's using that slang term. She's acknowledging that she's a sinner. She's not pretending that she's keeping any rules right or doing anything right. And Jesus responds to her essentially saying, your faith has, has meant that your daughter is healed. And she goes home and her daughter is well. The difference between the two is, here's a woman that is not pretending that she's got it all together but she wants something spiritual from Jesus. She recognises that he is God and she has faith in him. Whereas the Pharisees and religious leaders, who you would think would get it right, but they just keep misreading their own scriptures, do not recognise Jesus as God. In fact, they think he's this blasphemous imposter and they do not have any faith in him. And the evil in their hearts is not removed. I'm reading a book at the moment called... God Knows My Size. It's about a Romanian woman. She's probably about 15 years older than me, 10 years or 20 years older than me. And she grew up in Romania during the period after the Second World War when the communism began to gently take over that country. And as it did, while she was at school, the teachers started belittling and mocking students that were from Christian families and one day she came home thinking she just was just really full of doubt she was wondering really is there a God and if there is a God does he perform miracles and if there is a God does he know everything about me so she was worried about all those things because the atheists were attacking the Christians for belief in this imaginary God of theirs in that church that Sunday she heard the preacher talking about how it was really important that you all, even children, have your own personal encounter with God, that you know God is real for yourself, that you're not relying on, say, parents' faith, but you've got your own experience that God is real. You know that for yourself. And he said, to do that, just go home and pray. He says, if you don't know how to do that, just talk to God as like you'd talk to anybody else. And that was her problem, so she decided that's exactly what she would do. So because it was a really poor family that she lived in, and 
there's about 12 kids that the house only had two or at most three rooms so when it was bedtime they were all basically in the same bedroom she waited until everybody was asleep and then she got out of bed she kneeled down and she asked God for the three things that she needed most which was a pair of shoes because winter was coming and it was starting to snow and she had hand-me-down shoes from the older children and the ones she had at the moment were her brother's shoes that she had to stuff newspaper in the toes. They had holes in them. They weren't keeping her feet dry. And she wanted a coat and she wanted a jersey. So that's what she prayed for. And then she went to sleep. The next morning she wakes up and she's already excited. She's expectant. She looked under the bed. She thought God might have put them there. And she looks around the house. She, For a whole week she has this expectant attitude that God is going to come through with this prayer and prove that he is real and that he does do miracles. Well, on the last day of that week, the father comes home with a parcel from the post office and it's got stamps on it from abroad. It's been sent to them from abroad. They have no clue where it's come from. It's addressed just to the family. It's just got the surname of the family on it, nothing more. And they don't know what's in it. So the, the father puts it down on the table, the, all the family gather around, and he starts to open it. And the first thing that comes out are two girls' shoes, not unisex shoes, but girls' shoes. And Sylvia yells out, they're mine, because she'd been praying. She said, this, this is it, these are my shoes. And she tried them on, and they fit, fitted her feet perfectly. They didn't fit the older sisters, they didn't fit the younger sisters, they fitted her perfectly. And the next two things in the box were a woman's coat, and a woman's jersey, both of which fitted her, none of the other children. And she burst out into tears and she explained to the family that she had prayed for these things because she wanted to know whether God was real, whether he does miracles, and whether he knows everything. And she said, I now know that he has proved himself on all three of those things because I never said to him what my size was. And these things fit me perfectly. And that's why the book she's written is called God Knows My Size. And that event was foundational for the rest of her faith war because as the grip of communism and atheism spread over Romania, she had to deal with being shadowed by the secret police. She was interrogated and beaten at one point for running choirs, being a Christian and giving out the um, Bible to people. I know another friend who, of mine who was brought up in a Christian family and when he was at university in his 20s, he wanted to know for himself that God was real. He wanted an encounter with God. So he decided that what he would do is that he would pray every morning. He would read his Bible and he'd pray for a week and he would ask God to reveal himself to him. That was sort of the test that he put up there. At the end of that week, he found himself lying on the floor of his room, crying and crying, and the room was thick with the presence of the Holy Spirit. God answered his prayer. He knew God was real, and he's gone on to be a lawyer like me, but he also runs a church with his brother in Johnsonville. That moment was foundational for the rest of his journey. So if you are in the situation that Sylvia was in, or the situation that my friend was in and you want to know that God is real after this you can just pray at home for God to reveal himself to you and there's one final thing that's needed for salvation is not only knowing that God is real and responding to him it's responding to him by surrendering ourselves to his lordship in our lives and in the book I'm reading, Sylvia did that several years later when in the middle of her teens, she realised that she knew God was real, but she hadn't yet fully surrendered herself to him. He wasn't Lord of her life in the sense that he is the person on the boardroom table that is running things. So she did that and became a born-again believer and salvation came into her heart. So I just want to finish by offering for everybody who is watching this the opportunity to pray that prayer, that salvation prayer. So I'll just shut my eyes, but you can say this at home, in, or you can just echo it in your heart. So Jesus, I'm sorry 
that my pride has prevented me from accepting you as Lord and Saviour in my life. I want that now. I want your love to overwhelm me. I want your Holy Spirit to fill me so that I can love you well, I can love others well, and that I can be assured of eternal life. I ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. We're just going to have um, another song now just to reflect on that. God bless. So Lord, we just come back to you again afresh. Lord, we're sorry if we have had doubts or we put you on the back burner, but Lord, you are true. You are God. It's all about you, Jesus. We just put our lives on the altar again, Lord, and just offer ourselves as a living sacrifice to you, Lord, that you'd come and live in our hearts afresh. Lord, we have faith. We know we're nothing but dogs, Lord, but we we need you so much. And we want you, Jesus. So we just pour out our hearts to you in song. It's 
all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. And I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I've made it when it's all about you. It's all about you. It's all about you. It's all about you. And I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I've made it when it's all about you. It's all about you. Yeah, it's all about you. It's all about you. But you It's all about you Jesus All oh, my life is yours now I don't want it back All oh, my life for you all my actions, all my intentions for you. All my words, all my thoughts for you. All my work for you. The stars and the planets. It's all about you. All those around me, all the ones I love, they're from you. It's all about you. all about you You are worthy of it all You are worthy of it all From you are all things To you are all
if you like, that's kind of that song is a, a song of confession. Uh, it came out of a, a place where an Anglican church cancelled their worship because they felt they were turning into consumers. And the worship leader out of all of it wrote that song out of his pain where he came back to the heart of worship and it was all about Jesus. And if you like, over this lockdown, we again are coming back to what's really important, the heart of worship. It is all really about you, Jesus. So we're going to have a time of communion now. You staying with me, huh? You no, can no, if you like, that's all right. Stage Always pleased to have him. Uh, so we're going to have a time of communion where we do remember that it is all about Jesus and what he did for us on the cross. So the Lord is here. God's Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to offer thanks and praise. Thanks, family. It is indeed right always and everywhere to give thanks to you, the true and living God, through Jesus Christ. You are the source of life for all creation, and you made us in your own image. In your love for us, you sent your Son to be our Saviour. In the fullness of time, he became incarnate and suffered death on the cross. You raised him in triumph and exalted him in glory. Through him, you send your Holy Spirit upon your church and make us your people. And so we proclaim your glory as we say, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. To you indeed be glory, Almighty Father, because on the night before he died, your Son, Jesus Christ, took bread. When he had given you thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this to remember me. After supper, he took the cup. When he had given you thanks, he gave it to them and said, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, poured out for you. Do this as often as you drink it to remember me. Christ, Christ has died. died. Christ, Christ is, is risen. risen. Christ, Christ will, will come, come in glory. glory. Therefore, loving God, recalling now Christ's death and resurrection, we ask you to accept this, our sacrifice of praise. Send your Holy Spirit upon us in our celebration, that we may be fed with the body and blood of your Son and filled with your life and goodness. Strengthen us to do your work and to be your body in the world. Unite us in Christ and give us your peace. All this we ask through your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honour and glory, now and forever. Amen. Amen. We're now going to say the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the, the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and, and the glory, glory are yours, now and forever. forever. Amen. Amen. So we break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Now if you've got any kind of bread or liquid at home, we're just going to have communion together. So I will hand out to my family their communion supplies. So that the body of Christ is broken for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. So I'm now going to read out um, the words. We have a time which you're welcome to join us in every week too while we're in lockdown of prayer where we pray before the service as we normally do but we do it by Zoom and we wait on God um, after praying. Each of us in turn pray for words that the Spirit might be wanting to bring conditions, he might be wanting to heal today, uh, or just words of encouragement. So just the words of encouragement first, uh, do not fear, um, and also fear not, so there's a theme there, uh, fear not for I have given you the kingdom. An encouragement for families who are struggling at the moment, that God is going to honour you, and there could never be a stronger time for us to disciple our children at home. Uh, so real blessings for you in that. 
Um, words of healing. Um, someone has got an itchy scalp. Uh, I don't think it's head lice. It looks like it's some sort of scalp condition that's making you very itchy. Someone with a sore finger, and I'll certainly claim that. Someone with a sore neck. Um, the words that someone out there is suffering from depression or sadness. And God's saying the Holy Spirit is your comforter. He wants to break through the dark clouds like the dawn breaking through the darkness. As someone who needs to or wants to claim protection over something they're struggling with at the moment. And two words, you'd be pleased about this, James, because no one knew about your sermon. Two words about salvation. The first is someone is thinking that they're feeling far too unworthy to be accepted by God. And God's assurance that he wants you, uh, that he has paid for your sins on the cross. And the time to come is now, not when you think you're good enough. And another uh, word, when Jesus said, Lazarus, come out. Someone spiritually dead and either has been saved today or will be saved very shortly. So we pray prayers of salvation over our church family as well. So if those words speak to you or you want healing for anything today, if you're struggling emotionally, why don't you put your hands on your head? Uh, if there's any physical condition, the word that was read out or any other, just put your hand on the place that's suffering now. Through the blood of Christ, which we've just shared today, in the name of Jesus of Nazareth, there's no other name, we speak to these um, illnesses and we say, bow the knee, be healed in Jesus' name. Mm. Come Holy Spirit. Lord, we uh, speak to the illnesses and we just command them to submit to the name of Jesus. There is no other name under heaven and earth by which we can be saved, healed or delivered. In Jesus' name, Amen. So now we're going to finish um, with another time of worship. God bless you all. Let's worship one last time.
Zoom address, it's on our website under what's on under level four or just PM us, pre private message us and we'll give you the link. Otherwise, might see see you soon. See Bye. Ya.